All right, let's open our Bibles to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. Uh, Nehemiah 2. Nehemiah has received authority from the Persian king Artaxerxes to go to Jerusalem and make preparations to rebuild the city, uh, which had been left uh, desolate uh, after the Babylonians uh, came in and conquered it years before. And he's received letters to this effect from the Persian king. Uh, he surveys the damage, but he still hasn't told any of the Jews there his purpose for coming. So he gathers the local leaders, as they're referred to, nobles, Jews, priests, etc., in verse 16, uh, for that purpose. Let's pick up there at verse 17. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more of reproach. Then I told him of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Sambalet the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn, and despised us, and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them, and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us, therefore we his servants will, rise, will arise and build, but ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. All of that's self-explanatory. He says, we notice the good hand of God shows up again in verse 18, just as it did uh, earlier in, in verse 8. And then previously, when we were in the book of Ezra, chapter 7, and um, three verses in that chapter, Ezra 7, verse 6, verse 9, and verse 28 also, we see the similar language that God stepped in to prosper uh, Nehemiah tells the rulers and the nobles and the priests, etc., the words of the Persian king um, uh, to him. And being thus uh, encouraged, they immediately respond, verse 18, with, Let us rise up and build. And so they did, which we're going to see in chapters 3 through 7. Uh, I want you to notice, Nehemiah has no tolerance for the uh, opposition which were effectively the Palestinians of his day, uh, and Arabs, that verse 19 mentions. And he tells them, verse 20, But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Uh, also recall Zerubbabel's words back at Ezra chapter, or, yeah, Ezra chapter 4, if you want to flip back there quickly, Ezra 4, Ezra 4, and notice there verse 3. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus the king of Persia hath commanded us. Now in prophetic type, the Arab peoples who are the true uh, intruders, they are the true occupiers, they're the true trespassers um, in Israel, will all be banished from the land of Israel one day when the Lord Jesus Christ begins to reign on the earth. Zechariah 14, verse 21 says, quote, And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts, uh, remember, Sarah told Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Genesis 21, verse 10. And of course, that's what the, the uh, descendants of Ishmael were, the Arab peoples and those intermixing with the Jews uh, after the fact. Uh, let's go to chapter 3. And there's not a lot of commentary necessary, so I'm going to read verses 1 
down through verse 24. We'll bite off that big piece, see if we can chew it tonight. Start at verse 1. Then Elisha, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they built the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mia, they sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel. And next unto him built the men of Jericho. And next to them built Zachor, the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Ahasaneah build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Kaz. And next unto them repaired Meshalom, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezabel, Biel. And next unto them repaired Zadok, the son of Baanah. And next unto them the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehoiada, the son of Paseah, and Meshulam, the son of excuse me. They laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Melatiah the Gibeonite, and Jadon the Moronathite, the men of Gibeon, and of Mizpah, unto the throne of the governor on this side of the river. Next unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Harhiah, of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apothecaries. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. And next unto them repaired Rephaiah, the son of Hur, the ruler of half part of Jerusalem. And next unto them repaired Jediah, the son of Harumath, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hatish, the son of Hashab, Hashabniah, Malchijah, the son of Harum, and Hashab, the son of Peath Moab, repaired the other piece, and the tower of the furnaces. And next unto him repaired Shalom, the son of Halahesh, the ruler of half part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters. The valley gate repaired Hanan, uh, and the inhabitants of Zenoa, they built it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and a thousand cubits on the wall under the dung gate. But the dung gate repaired at Malchiah, the son of Rechab, uh, the ruler of part of uh, Beth Hasarim. He built it and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. The gate, but the gate of the fountain repaired Shalom, the son of Colhose the ruler of part of Mizpah. He built it, and covered it, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And the wall of the pool of Siloa, that will be Siloam, mentioned in the New Testament, John chapter 4, by the king's garden of the pool uh, under the stairs, they go down from the city of David. After him repaired Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk, the ruler of half part of Bethzur, unto the place over against the sepulchres of David, and to the pool that was made, and unto the house of the mighty. After him repaired the Levites, Rehum the son of Benai. Next unto him repaired Hashabiah, the ruler of the half part of Keilah, in his part. After him repaired their brethren, Bevei, the son of Hinnadad, the ruler of the half part of Keilah. And next to him repaired Ezer, the son of Jeshua, the ruler of Mizpah, another piece over against the going up to the armory at the turning of the wall. After him Baruch, the son of Zebei, earnestly repaired the other piece from the turning of the wall unto the door of the house of Eliashib, the high priest. After him repaired Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Kaz, another piece from the door of the house of Eliashib, even to the end of the house of Eliashib. And after him repaired the priests, the men of the plain. After him repaired Benjamin and Hashab over against their house. After him repaired Azariah, the son of Maasiah, the son of Ananiah, by his house. After him repaired Benui, the son of Hinnadad, another piece, from the house of Azariah, unto the turning of the wall, uh, even unto the corner. I'm going to stop right there. Now, without a good map or a diagram of the old city um, in front of us when we're reading, it can be a little confusing. Uh, to follow the description. But Nehemiah is tracing the, the workers around the city 
who's doing what and where are they doing it and so forth. And we have a list of gates to the city wall which uh, don't constitute much of a problem here. Uh, although I don't know that I'd be proud to say I repaired the dung gate. Um, but read verse 1 again. Uh, then Elisha the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they built the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mia they sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel. Uh, it would be that uh, the high priest and the other priest repaired the fish gate uh, and the wall in two directions. Although well, the language is a little bit <coughs> awkward for some people. Um, under the tower of Mia in one direction and then from the gate under the tower of Hananiel in another direction. So even without a map to, to follow, you can still get a sense of all the workers getting involved, everyone doing their part uh, in the restoration uh, with one mind and one uh, objective, to repair the city. Uh, notice there's an interesting insertion in verse 20, uh, the word earnestly. After him, Baruch, the son of Zebai, earnestly repaired the other piece, etc. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable and one of the things that's unprofitable for is instruction in righteousness. Um, if you wanted to find something devotional or practical from this long, boring list of names and uh, workers, in the middle of this list, uh, that would be it. The word repaired occurs 31 times in this chapter, but only once is it prefaced with the word earnestly. Um, one man earnestly repaired. And in so doing, he um, fulfilled uh, a certain Bible principle. Go back, uh, rather forward, to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. And we won't be long tonight. Ecclesiastes 9. fingers to work here. Ecclesiastes 9. And notice there verse 10. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. The time to do something for God, of course, is now. You don't get a second chance. You don't get to make up for it after you've already died. There is no, uh, let me have a do-over in the afterlife with God. Uh, that's why little uh, quotable quotes have been coined, uh, only when life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Uh, life is short. Death is sure. Sin the curse, but Christ the cure. And, um, and other expressions like those. Also look forward in the New Testament, the book of Romans, chapter 12. <coughs> Romans 12. Verses 10 and 11. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit serving the Lord. So whatever you do, you should do <coughs> with uh, gusto, as it were. And Colossians chapter 3 Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. 
And lastly, verse 23. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. So this man Baruch was satisfying that principle of not being slothful, uh, being diligent, and putting his hand to it with all the, all the uh, energy he had. Let's read a few more verses and we'll come back and comment on them next week. Let's see here. <clears throat> Verse 25, Palau, the son of Uzai, over against the turning of the wall, and the tower which lieth out from the king's high house, that was by the court of the prison, after him, Pedaiah, the son of Parash. Moreover, the Nethanims dwelt in Ophel, under the place over against the water gate toward the east, and the tower that lieth out. After them, the Tekoites repaired another piece over against the great tower that lieth out, even unto the wall of Ophel. From above, the horse gate repaired the priests, everyone over against his house. After them, repaired Zadok, the son of Immer, over against his house. After him repaired also Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate. After him repaired Hananiah, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, the sixth son of Zalaph, another piece. After him repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, over against his chamber. After him repaired Malchiah, the goldsmith's son, under the place of the Nethanims, and of the merchandise, over against the gate Mithcad and to the going up of the corner. And between the going up of the corner, under the sheep gate, repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. So a lot of people involved, uh, people with certain uh, trades, or, or occupations and trades, uh, nevertheless put that aside and worked on repairing the wall. There was one name called uh, the apothecaries. Those are the ones who mixed the incense um, and ground it together in perfumes for the priests and to, to be burned in the tabernacle. And that was their duty. That was their main occupation, their main thing they were responsible to do, besides everything else necessary to live. That was their job. But they all pitched in to help rebuild the city wall, the, the different gates going into and out of the city. You know, in ancient times, a lot of cities had, were protected by walls. That was a natural barrier. Build that wall, we hear a lot. Um, and that's, that, that was their cry. They were Donald Trumpites. Build that wall. And uh, I think it's only fitting that, that President Trump made Jerusalem the official capital of uh, Israel, at least as far as the United States is concerned. And uh, the world hates that. The Muslims hate it. The Catholics hate it, and uh, everybody that's wicked hates it. But uh, those who see the, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee, uh, being fulfilled, then we can expect that at least God's hand of judgment will be stayed a little longer from this country because of that action. And I'm, I'm glad for that. You know, but they had walls around cities in ancient times for natural barriers, natural protection, because there was no air flight. You'd have to worry about someone flying over the wall. But um, there's a couple of verses, one, at least one or two verses in the book of Ezekiel that predict the uh, armies from the north would come down upon an, uh, a land of unwalled villages. Well, only if they were building walls prior to that, around cities, would that verse make any sense. And so a lot of Bible commentators who aren't premillennial have tried to say, well, that had to have been fulfilled in the past when walls were the common thing. And as I've pointed out the last few years, one of the things that's been keeping Israel safe is the building of their security wall and their fence all over the place uh, to keep... Palestinians or terrorists out and certain places you can only go in or out through one portal and every time you go through you have to be checked by security guards, your vehicle checked and only it's only the wall, the security wall or 
fencing, as they might want to call it, that's been protecting some of their cities. And I can foresee a time when they will be so caught up believing that the Messiah has arrived to us, he will be the Antichrist, after you and I are raptured out of here, uh, that they'll, they'll let their guard down, take their walls down. And uh, that's when he will turn on them and uh, all hell breaks loose. And when the Lord Jesus comes back, all these other armies gather together to try to withstand the Lord Jesus Christ. And that becomes the focal point of all the world's uh, final wars once again. And I can see that being uh, having a, a, a secondary or a future fulfillment yet, in the, uh, yet to come.